What of Jerry Lewis? What are we, what am I to make of him as a movie fan, as a film critic? I've been thinking a lot about Jerry Lewis for the last few months for some reason. I'm not entirely sure how it started, but I thought that today would be a good day to post a video about Jerry Lewis. The, the day this video goes up is Labor Day, which of course uh, for many, many, many years was the date of the Jerry Lewis MDA Labor Day telethon, which I used to be a absolute regular viewer of. I would look forward to it. I would watch it every year as much as I could. Something about Jerry Lewis is fascinating to me. I think what is fascinating to me about him is that he is one of the most frustrating and complicated figures in cinema, in entertainment in general. He is a legend. He is a legitimate legend of his industry. He has a, a career on television and in film that goes back, and, of, and on stage as well in nightclubs, that goes back to the 1940s. He is undeniably a very significant figure in film, in our popular culture. And yet, I, when, I, when, I, when I go to his work, when I watch his movies, when I watch his comedy, I can't conclude that he's anything other than awful. I mean, I've tried so, so many times to give Jerry Lewis a chance, because I feel like it's one of those things where it's, he's, he's so legendary, he has such an exalted status, I can't just ignore Jerry Lewis. And I, and I have, I guess we all have a natural tendency as humans to put things in their place. And I just don't know what Jerry Lewis's place is. And the more I think about it, the more maddening it is to me to think, what, where do I put Jerry Lewis? What do I make of him? I, I've, I've watched Jerry Lewis films. I've watched films of Jerry Lewis that are thought of as like his greatest work. Like, for instance, The Nutty Professor which is the movie that everybody sort of knows is probably his most widely seen film uh, and one of his most critically appreciated films. I think N Nutty Professor is in the, uh, the Library of Congress list of, of significant films. It's, uh, I think it may have, it's been on some AFI lists. Like it's legitimately thought of by the, the, uh, the canonizing institutions of the film industry uh, as a very important film. And I watched it just recently, and it's horrible. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so, so horrible. It's not funny at all. It's just desperate, flailing, clownish antics in desperate need of a laugh, and there's just no laugh. I mean, what, what gets me about Jerry Lewis, what, what I find so noticeable, so readily apparent about his film work, is the silence. And it's not silence that I would say is well used, because silence can be an incredibly effective comedic tool. A silence well placed, an awkward pause, uh, uh, a reaction to something, a, a quiet, can be incredibly funny. But not in the case of Jerry Lewis. Uh, there's a, there are multiple scenes in The Nutty Professor where there is just utter silence in the aftermath of, of something that has happened that was supposedly funny. And, I mean, there's nothing going on in the film. There's no music on the soundtrack. No, there is no dialogue. There are no sounds other than just the room tone. And it's just death. And it kills the pacing. That's another thing. His, his use of silence is horrible, uh, awkward, in not a funny way. And his pacing is just atrocious. Not just his pacing as a storyteller, but his pacing in terms of his, his comic timing. A guy who is such a celebrated physical comedian, you would think he would have much better comic timing than he has. And his comic timing as a director is, could hardly be worse. Uh, he let he he lets things drag way way too long. Uh, there's no punch. There's no vigor. It's all just sort of everything. Just kind of is allowed to land, and then just sit there. And it's just awful. It's almost unwatchable. 
and yet he's considered a genius. And that's, that's, that's what makes him so troublesome to me. That's what makes him so fascinating to me, is that I can watch his work and my response to it over and over again, as I come to it again and again and again, my response to it is, this is awful. This is so bad. And the other thing is, this is, this is what makes him such a fascinating figure to me, is that he is not without talent. I cannot honestly say that Jerry Lewis is just a hack, that he's not, that he has no talent at all, because he clearly does have talent. That's the thing that, that in addition to what I, what I perceive as the, the gulf between his legend status and the quality of his work, there's also the fact that he evidently has great talent. One of my favorite films, one of my favorite comedies, um, and this is, this is its, its 30th anniversary, um, is the, the, the film King of Comedy, starring uh, Robert De Niro and directed by Martin Scorsese. A, a great movie, a, such a funny, a great black comedy. And Jerry Lewis is in that movie in a very prominent role. He plays the, the, uh, the Johnny Carson analog with whom Martin Scorsese, or with whom uh, Robert De Niro's character is obsessed. And, and, and Jerry Lewis is great in King of Comedy. He is absolutely brilliant. It's a really great, straight performance. He's completely believable. He's completely in the moment. Uh, he has some funny moments that, are, that land just perfectly, that he plays with restraint and understatement. And if you've never seen this movie, would you ever imagine you would see Jerry Lewis hit a comic beat with restraint and understatement? And yet he does in King of Comedy. And, and it's, 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 he's great. He's great. He is so great in that movie. And that just makes it even more confusing. It's also worth mentioning uh, Jerry Lewis's very significant technical contributions to the, the motion picture industry. In fact, I think the only Oscar he has, he was awarded an honorary Oscar uh, some years ago for his technical achievements. Because uh, you may not, a lot of people don't even know this, uh, video assist, the, the system that is universally used in filmmaking today, uh, from the independent level all the way up through the, the most expensive studio film you could think of, uh, where video footage of a scene is shot at the same time as it's being shot on film or in HD or what, whatever the format that will ultimately be used for the final product. Uh, it's also shot simultaneously on video so that the director can go back and review the take immediately. So there's no waiting for the lab to process the film or etc. You, you, can, you can see if it was a good take right away. Uh, Jerry Lewis invented that. Jerry Lewis was the first filmmaker to do that, to, film, to come up with a way of, of shooting takes video and film simultaneously so he could immediately go back and review the video. He, was, he invented that. He was the first person to do that. And now that, that, that is universally used throughout the film industry all over the world. That's a pretty big deal. That's a major, important innovation that Jerry Lewis is responsible for. And uh, when, you think of, when you think about that, and then you, 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 you attach that to Jerry Lewis, who did that because he wanted to make sure that the takes in his films were just perfect, and you watch those films, and, and, and they drag, and there's all this empty space, and the, the, the pratfalls are just lame and unfunny and awkward, and, and just, I mean, it's just so bad. He used video assist, he invented video assist to, to go over the takes in his films that were fucking awful. It, mm. And then there's also, I mean, when you, when you talk about Jerry Lewis, it's impossible to ignore uh, his... The, his pretentiousness, his unbearable self-seriousness that he adapt, that he sort of adopted in the 60s and the 70s and on through today when he talks about his own work. He has such a sense of self-importance and seriousness. There's that famous or infamous appearance on the Dick Cavett show that is on YouTube now that you can find if you want to watch it where he's sitting there in a blue coat and an ascot and he's you know doing these very refined gestures with his fingers and I think he might be smoking a cigarette at one point and and he's just and he's talking about his own work in such a serious tone and he's going over these decisions that he made about the film and how you know the studio once told me to uh, recut a film and all I did was just switch two sequences in order 
and show it to them and they were just amazed they were uh they they said i was a genius it was it was it was the exactly the change that the film needed and then of course when uh, the film premiered i switched them back and no one ever noticed you know he he he, does, he has this very serious tone of voice and of course it's always about how the studio executives are idiots and morons who don't know what what a good movie is and he is the the genius who has been forced to wrestle with these ignoramuses for his entire life and um it's i mean it's funny it's really funny to see of all the people who you would think of would be like incredibly pretentious self-important filmmakers who would be so uh in love with their own work and be such marks for themselves you wouldn't think that goofy spastic Jerry Lewis would be that person and yet he is more that person than anyone else ever has been. So why do I care? I mean yes he's given good performances here and there, he, he is responsible for this this incredibly significant technical innovation but I think his movies suck and I think his attitude sucks, he always comes across as a really just self-important conceited dick especially when talking about his own work. Why do I care? It's because of the Jerry Lewis telethon, I think. I, I started watching the Jerry Lewis Labor Day telethon when I was four or five years old, maybe even younger. I mean, it, I just remember it from when I was very, very little watching it on TV. First, you know, watching it maybe with my mom because it just wasn't on. Because back in the day, it was on like three or four different channels and it was on all day. And it was just, that's what there was to watch. Um, and I watched it up through my teenage years, young adulthood, it, uh, it just was an institution to me. And I, it was really, looking back and thinking about it now, it was really the first exposure that I had to show business. Because there's something about the Jerry Lewis telethon that even in the 80s, when I first came to it, it felt old, it felt anachronistic felt like a holdover from a previous era and it was it was a nightclub act it was it was a 21 hour nightclub show there were comics there were singers and dancers uh, and then of course there was a, a huge injection of pathos because it was for charity and Jerry would have these kids with muscular dystrophy come out on stage and tell their stories and there'd be these video packages about their struggles and their families and all of these captains of industry and the head of like the firefighters union and uh, all these business people and famous people who would raise money would come on stage and they would hand Jerry Lewis these checks for all this money and uh, you would take station breaks during the hour, you'd go back to the local station, and there would be the the anchor of the local news on that station, who you only ever saw when he was doing the news, or she was doing the news, and all of a sudden, there they are, talking to you, and, and, and interviewing people, and doing stuff, and having pledge drives, and there's just something just, just unique and fascinating about it. And the the national portion the Jerry Lewis portion of that telethon was really my first exposure to that sort of just generic showbiz famous people coming on and hanging out and doing their act and I mean there are lots of YouTube channels now who have videos of those old segments from the the Jerry Lewis telethon I've just been devouring them lately and um, a lot of that stuff is terrible because <laughs> it's it's like it's 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 hoary, old, cheesy, like Poconos resort style comedy, you know, like Catskills comedy or or song and dance numbers or whatever. And uh, and it's 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 not good. And yet I have such a warm feeling about it, such a, a, an affection and a nostalgia for it. I guess because I was exposed to it at such a young age and, and because it was the first time that I was aware that such a thing existed. And, uh, and even then, it was one of the only places where you could see that sort of thing on television. And uh, Jerry Lewis is, is inextricably linked to that. And, uh, you know, the theme song for it for all those years was an instrumental version of the song Smile that was written by Charlie Chaplin, who is now, uh, uh, here I am as an adult, Chaplin, one of my very favorite filmmakers of all time. And unbeknownst to me when I was a little kid watching the Jerry Lewis telethon, uh, and all these people like Sammy Davis Jr. and uh, Frank Sinatra and people who I really didn't even know who they were at that point, but I knew that they were famous and I knew that they were important and there they were on my TV. 
singing and dancing and telling jokes for a good cause. And, and uh, here I was being exposed to this song uh, that was written by who would turn out to be one of my very favorite filmmakers. It's just, I don't know, there's just so much wrapped up for me in the Jerry Lewis telephone. And because of that, uh, it's, it's difficult to just write Jerry Lewis off. Even though as, in terms of quality, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> and, and and for Jerry Lewis, I would say it probably was never that good. Uh, but he's a part of my cultural experience in a, in a way that few people are. And for a length of time that few people uh, can claim to have been. And it's what makes me care about him. And it's what makes me feel like I have to do something with him. I have to know where he stands. And I think the truth is, where he stands is in that place of ambiguity, where I'll never quite know what to do with him, because he will always be pulled in all these directions in my mind. He will always be both the guy who made awful films and the guy who was incredibly pretentious about those films and the guy who gave a brilliant performance in a great film, King of Comedy, and the guy who was the driving force behind the Jerry Lewis telethon, which while awful in, a, in an aesthetic sense and, and in, a, in a, 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 a literal sort of quality sense, uh, was also very important to me and was, was an eye-opening thing for me to watch and to be exposed to, to showbiz. So that's where he'll... I think that's the place for him. What, 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 what of Jerry Lewis? Where do I put him? I put him in that gray area. I put him in that floating space of ambiguity where I, I can't say he's great. I can't say, just simply dismiss him and say he's awful and not worthy of consideration. He's just there. He's just sort of floating there. And that's probably where he'll always be for me, in that space of ambiguity where he's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. And I would also really like to see The Day the Clown Cried, wouldn't you?